previously on Who's Next. Yeah. There's a grappling legend amongst us, and we're gonna find out who's next. We're gonna compete in a 16-man submission-only tournament. We got one out of the way, so three left to go. Super stoked, can't wait to get in there, have my, my next match. Here for a good time, not a long time. Nobody leaves until there's a submission. You definitely say I deserve it. I freaking showed more heart than anyone. Uh, I think people should be a little scared of that. See you in the morning, go home, get some rest. We got a lot of stuff to do tomorrow. Yesterday was insane, watching all these people fight to be here. I'm still pretty beat up from my match. That really gave us all a wake up call though. You better be ready to freaking fight three hours here, man. You know, I'm excited. I'm sure these challenges are gonna be super fun. They don't give us no itinerary, no anything like that, so I'm just ready for anything. All right, let's get the blue team over here, the red team over here. Well, I saw somebody like warming up their wrist. I was like, hmm, he might have known something. So I was like, what is this going to be? At first, I thought it was going to be like, you know, the skateboard tricking thing. I was like, that might be it. All right, welcome to your first team challenge. Yesterday was a crazy day. How you guys feeling? Feeling good. Amazing. <laughs> Adam, how you doing? I'm the best I've ever been. All right, you guys ready for your first team challenge? Sir. All right, let's unveil it. Everyone knows grip strength is a big part of grappling, right? So today we're going to be testing your grip strength in a classic arm wrestling tournament, doing head-to-head -head matchups where the winner stays on. So you guys are going to pick your person that goes first. If they win, they stay on. They got to run the gauntlet against the other team. Oh. <laughs> easy, easy. Whichever team is left standing at the end wins today's challenge and gets to pick the first quarterfinal matchup. Question? Do we have time to practice so I can show my team a few moves? You guys got a little time to, to brainstorm and Thank come up you, with sir. stuff. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Just going to show you guys some moves. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Anybody here good at arm wrestling? Two ringers. You got gigantism. He knows secret moves. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So we're going we're gonna to break up, do your strategy, come back with who you want to go first. And remember, there's a lot on the line today. Whoever wins this picks the first quarterfinal matchup that will take place in a few days. Good luck. I think we're gonna lose this one. <laughs> I thought so too. I think so too. I, think so too. I don't want to break. How, my how are we gonna take down the giant? Um, later on with a car. With <laughs> a car. Yeah, we we got pretty uh, screwed today. Yeah, 
pretty screwed up. I knew what because they have a Neanderthal on their team. <laughs> You're from Romania, correct? Yeah. He's yeah. a literal yeah. Viking. As soon as the challenge was revealed, the strategy was to take the team and put it on Big Dan's back and have him sling these guys around at that table. Did you see the team over there? Combined, they're the size of one of Big Dan's legs. He's the biggest guy, 6'7", 270. So when it's a physical challenge, I know we had it in the bag. I competed against Gordon twice. I'm 2-0 against Gordon in arm wrestling. Uh, I got my ass whooped in training after that, but I knew that these guys weren't half as strong as Gordon, and if I could pin him, I could pin everybody pretty easily. All right, so if you are taken out, who's next? Uh, probably the guy with the broken wrist. <laughs> First, I just want to pull him towards me. So Andrew showed us all the techniques we could do, how to use your legs on the table, how to do the over the top. And we got to set the tone, and it's all on you. Of course. We trust you, big man. We believe in you. All right, hands in. Win on three. One, two, three. Win! Win. Woo! We're going to do a three-hour time limit on these matches, all right? <laughs> I'm out. All right, so you guys had your time to figure out who you're going to go with. We'll go blue team first. Craig, who's your first? There's no good picks here. There's no good picks. <laughs> so I'll start with the worst one. Mike, get in there. Oh, man. <laughs> You're the worst. <laughs> Tim, who are you going with first? Big Dan. <laughs> Big Dan. Let's go, Mike. Handle business. <laughs> Yo, do what you do, go. baby. The matches was pretty much quintet style. Whoever wins stays on. Mike's cheating already. It's fine. Now he's correct. First, it was me. You know, obviously tried to cheat, use my head, use my, use my leverage, but you know, the ref, Hollywood Mike, was very strict. He didn't allow it. One, two, three. Nope, not yet. <laughs> Tell me when I say kombat. Come on, When I Mike. say kombat. One, two, three, kombat. Hey. Oh, oh <laughs> My hand didn't hit the pad. I think your hand hit the pad. <laughs> All right, Renee, Renee. Wrap your, post your leg on the table so you don't get lifted up. Renee, post your right leg on the table. Yeah, there you go. One, two, three, match. Hey, hey, Renee. <laughs> Big Dan's about to have five seconds mat time here. I held him for like a second and I like closed my eyes and I was like, okay, take a deep breath. And it just, it's like, it's like you got like flipped on your back. Like I was, I was like, wow. I like sort of shook my head up a little bit. Here it goes. He's got, he's got secret moves. Hold on, hold on. Andrew, let's go. Your hand. Come on, you gotta be. Come on, give him some respect. Give him some respect. One, two, three, kibbutz. Our plan was to tire him out. Third up, I was up. And I was like, okay, he might be a little tired. Andrew Tack didn't look like he had arm wrestling training. They were going over the King's move, which is one of the most dangerous moves in arm wrestling. It would actually break your elbow if done incorrectly. He gave me false hope. Like we were going, he like let me come up to neutral, stopped like resisting. So I stopped resisting. I was like, I don't want to tire out my arm. And then he oh. just hit it in. Yeah, he kind of hurt my elbow, but you know, that's a part of the game, so. It's all on you, Isaac. Isaac. Yo, Isaac, you gotta do the LeBron. Remember the shoulder line with your elbow. Shoulder line. One, two, three, kombat. Oh. Oh. I'm a great arm wrestler. You got it! Let's go, Blue Team! Renee, get in there! Oh my god. Let's go! Yeah! Thank you! Yeah! Man, that was hard, dude. Red team wins. Red team's gonna pick the first quarterfinal matchup. So you guys are gonna have 10 minutes to go off and talk with each other, and then come back and let us know who it's gonna be. Big Dan, you took it home. Choice is yours. What matchup you wanna see first round? 
Um, they're probably gonna go with the biggest guy versus the little guy. <laughs> that's probably what they're going to do. So that's why I was thinking me versus Big Dan. First off, Tim, who are you gonna go with from the blue team? Who we're going with for the blue team? Isaac. I'll go stand over there. And representing the red team. Adam, Iron Man. Oh, Adam first. All right. All right, that's a good matchup. <laughs> I don't see the strategy behind that. It's a bold strategy. <laughs> I'm like genuinely confused right now. Like, why did But it's okay. That? It's good. It's good. That was a horrible choice. Why would they choose that? Because they don't want him to go against anybody else. I am like the most sore I've ever been in my life. I'm I'm messed up today for sure. All right, Big Dan, what do you want? I was thinking Adam versus Isaac would be a good match. Let's do it, bro. So they left it up to Dan since he won, and he looked right at me. He's like, "Oh, Adam, Isaac." And I was like, "Hmm." I wonder why he wants that. Maybe he didn't want to fight him. <laughs> I think he wants to pick an easier match for himself. Selfish. <laughs> I've never seen in any reality show like this where a good guy's won the challenge and picked the lowest seed guy against the opposite team's highest seed. And it does make a lot of sense if there's someone over there pulling the strings for their own self-interest. Instead of Big Dan picking somebody that he wanted to fight, he picked the person he wanted to fight least to fight the most wounded person on his team. So, put one and two together. Are you, are you ducking Isaac? No, I am not ducking Isaac. People can accuse me of anything, but I'm sure me and Isaac will meet eventually. It's hard to know what he's thinking. I don't even know if he knows what he's thinking. None of us on our team understood the logic behind that pick. Honestly, even some of the members of the red team were confused. I wish it was more of a consensus of deciding who should go against who just because of more of a team thing. I feel like any competitive advantage would have been more beneficial versus one of our teammates possibly leaving. I think he's, uh, he's my teammate, but at the same time, I'm on to him. I'm on to Big Dan. I think he's trying to get me out. And I know who he's teammates with. <laughs> I know they're conspiring against me. He sent, Gordon sent him to make my life harder. He even looks like him. Has the shaky raccoon eyes. Why, why did you think that would be a good match? Uh, just a clash of styles. I thought the Adams leg lock defense was really good and Isaac's leg attacks were good. Who do you think has the better jiu jitsu? Uh, I'm not going to answer that question. Okay. Yeah. All right, good luck, guys. We're going to take you over to the house now and we'll see you later for the fight. forward to seeing the house. I actually didn't, I don't even know what it looks like. I don't know anything. So I'm excited to see the environment and you know if we have any visuals outside the house. Just the feel, you know, being closer to the guys, getting to know them outside of jiu-jitsu. That's the main thing. It's a very interesting clash of team styles too. I feel like our team's very respectful and chill and the other team's a little rowdy so they're gonna provoke some some trouble for sure and <laughs> when I'm a little less tired and I'm feeling a little more sassy I'm down I'm down the clown but right now don't f with me. <laughs> So you were homeschooled, right? Yeah. So why did your parents choose to homeschool you? They wanted us to be good stitches, so we didn't. So we had time to like train. They weren't. <laughs> they didn't want us to go to public school and only be able to train like once a day at night. Wow. Like I was always like counting. So down. your parents bred you for jujitsu. I mean, kinda, yeah. Holy shit. It's kind of like Big Dan, except he was made in a laboratory. Just <laughs> <laughs> nice. it. Looks like this is it. Sick. Welcome home. Ooh. I'm into it. Dang, we got the cul-de-sac, nice. All right, welcome to the house. This is where you'll be the next two weeks. You got four bedrooms. Four bedrooms. First come, first serve. First come, first serve. Whoever gets there first, take the bed. Go for it. <laughs> Bro, he's got the master up. I feel like it's like Black Friday, everybody's just getting trampled and stuff, throwing kids out the way. This is pretty nice. Oh man! I call this one 
I sprinted in, I saw the master bedroom, but it didn't quite look like a master. It looked smaller, so I was like, shoot, that's not it. And then I saw all the other rooms, I was like, that was definitely it. I got the seagull, bro, by myself. <laughs> Get out of here! Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, no. Yo, Rufus. All right, this is my bed, I guess. Hey, Kyle. Go <laughs> yourself. <laughs> this guy got the big ass bed, too. You should be down at this guy. Oh, <laughs> big dance on the little bed? <laughs> He's gonna freaking murder me in my sleep. <laughs> Might be my last entry. I was lucky. I feel like everybody was trying to get the big main room, you know, with the, the showers, the TVs, all that stuff. Honestly, I just wanted my own space. So while they were trying to figure out that, I was lucky enough to get my own room. I'm um, the only person in the house to get their own room. Everybody got to share rooms, breathe the same air. Dang! Oh, there's a hot tub score! The house is really cool, like a lot of stuff to do. I never think I was going to be doing things like this. You got the big bed. <laughs> yeah, who's sleeping right here? Bro, you sleep right there. Oh, <laughs> we said we're gonna switch. I know, that's what I said, bro. I never said that, bro. I never two, said that. Two nights on, one night off. Okay, two nights on, one night off. You know what's going on with him? There's only one bed left and it's in the room with Big Dan and Bradley, so he says he's just gonna sleep on a couch. <laughs> he don't wanna go in there. <laughs> I'm good out <laughs> here. They told us to run and pick a room, and I was like, oh crap. I ran in, I looked right to my left, I was like, nice big bed. Jumped on it, and I was like, I'm chilling. And then Big Dan walks in, looks at the twin mattress that he would have to sleep on, looks at me in like the king size bed, and he's just giving me like death stare. And I'm just like, Sorry, dude. Black belt. I got the bed. But then I was like, you know what? We'll leave it up to fate. Rock, paper, scissors. Best of one. That's it. No questions asked. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. <laughs> okay. There you go. You good for it? Of course. All right, thank I'm you. man of my word. I gave him the chance to take the bed that I earned. And after he was still like kind of mad at me, he looked like he was going to like eat me in my sleep. I mean, I got it fair and square, but like part of me is like, He's huge, so like I'll give him the big ass bed. Why not? You know, um, rock paper scissors is everything in my life. Like, I think being a man of your word and sticking to your promises and all that. I think it's an important trait to have. <laughs> Let me tell you something, Cat Tackett. <laughs> you, you mess with me, you're gonna end up in a casket. Amen. The youngest versus the oldest. Grandpa versus child. Yeah. Get down here, bro. <laughs> Get down here, bro. I'm glad you're on our team, though, because you're definitely the wisest. Grandpas are always the wisest. You keep sure. calling me that. We're going to have round two a little early. We need a super fight at the gym today. <laughs> Top athletes in the sport train all day, every day. So we've set up training sessions for these guys. Up first, we got the blue team with Craig Jones. Craig's known for his leg locks. I'm excited to see what kind of heel hook stuff he's got for the guys. Dude, that scratch is water bottle, bro. That was, bro. Dude. Wait, Yo. what the heck? I mean, he probably... With a sewer. Bro, who... No is... way, bro. Scratch. Scratch. Scratch, you down there? Dude. Scratch. No way Scratch is down here right now, bro. So we just got to training, and I'm like looking around, and there was a sewer right there. And I was like, that's my guy. So we ran over there to check out if uh, the sewer rat was in there. What's going in? Oh, you put the lid back on. All right, hurry, go, go, go. How deep is it? All right, yeah, I definitely get you back up. <laughs> Dude, it's kind of sketchy. Move, move, move. <laughs> Do you want me to come down there too? No, I think we, I think we should go back up. It was pitch black down there. I don't know how the sewer rat like lives and spends his whole life in the sewer, but I immediately jumped in and immediately regretted my decision and thought I was gonna die. Now get off of me, mate. <laughs> don't get out of here. Get Hand. Get your paws off me, mate. What were you guys doing in the drain? Oh, uh, we were looking for a scratch because we saw his water bottle. I was down there. I looked down one way and it was pitch black. I looked down the other way, it was pitch black. And I was like, 
dude, there's definitely a crackhead down here or something like that. That's a horrible way to talk about the sewer, right? Eh? Yeah, can we can we start class with legs though? Uh, I can't show you, it's top secret. Dude. We don't train with John. I'm oh, you're kidding. <laughs> and we can get the exposure here. For me, I'll never try to finish palm to palm because I feel like we can't actually break someone's leg. Even wrist to wrist is very difficult. We're gonna shoot Damn. a secondary hand behind the armpit and then First oh, so I keep tension on the toes and I turn my thumb back towards me. Don't go hand to elbow, elbow to hand. We need to ratchet his heel higher, so we need to collapse his toes. So we're gonna pull the, our left arm out. What's that? I love Craig as a coach. Craig really fits my game. He's given me a lot of details from the back. He's given me a lot of passing details, a lot of defense details already. He, he's a funny guy. He's like a big kid, so he's just like one of us. He uh, has a lot of experience. He's been doing jiu-jitsu for like over 15 years now, so he's definitely good to, to have as our coach. I think my team's really good, I think. You know, we're the smaller guys compared to the other guys, but everyone's really technical and everyone's really good. We definitely don't have the higher belt, but we have the technique. You know, Mike is a survivor, bro. You'll put him in bad positions and he'll get out. Isaac, he's a submission artist. Renee is extremely technical. I feel like our team is very strong in that we'll overwhelm the other competitors with our persistence and our will to win, you know? Guys, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have a special guest instructor. So you guys gotta sit on this wall. It's a big name and it might be someone I'm having a match coming up. Yeah, so but you guys gotta, you gotta face the wall. Uh, Heads down, asses up, facing the wall. <laughs> Pull them down. <laughs> we got a special guest. All right, guys, face the wall, close your eyes, hold hands. All right, guys, you get work. <laughs> oh, what? Hello, my students. What? Oh, my God. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> I didn't have my glasses on. Out of the corner of my eye, I see a guy wearing a fanny pack, wearing like these white shoes, a rash guard. I was like, is that John Donaher? You don't wear a rash guard with normal clothes, except for this one guy that wears it all the time. He steps out onto the mat, but as soon as I heard his voice, I was like, yo, this is the sewer rat. He's back. <laughs> So Sewer Rat was there on the first day. Craig gave Sewer Rat his brown belt about 30 minutes after he met him. And then Craig hit me up that night, said, hey, do you mind if I bring him on as my assistant coach? So he canceled his flight. The next thing I know, Sewer Rat's beard shaved, head shaved, he's wearing a rash guard. He's dressed like John Danaher. So I'm here to demonstrate a move that was shown last night. It's the classic drop Sayanagi, or in colloquial Sewer Rat terms, the miso sorry. <laughs> <laughs> The key to this technique is distraction. We're trying to disorient our opponent and mess with his visual perceptions. You see how the eye works is there's an iris, a pupil, a cornea, and a lens that feeds back to the optical nerve in the back of the eye. So we're trying to disrupt the entire visual process that's going on. <laughs> the way we maximize this technique is my five foundational principles called the scratch pass gas method. Have you ever done the spoon before? You felt this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna step back and then drop my body. Me so sorry! <laughs> <laughs> you hate to do it, but you love it at the same time. <laughs> now, turtle, close guard. And then we'll do three regular rounds. I'm feeling confident going into this next one for sure. I think I know how to, you know, tire people out a lot better than Tristan did in, in that match, so I'll get him tired. And I think I'll put him in, in, in bad positions and be able to finish those bad positions. Isaac knows the game. Isaac knows how to pace himself and is a cardio machine. He's a submission machine. I think Isaac crushes him. 
anywhere it goes. I grew up in a pretty small city in Australia, Adelaide. I grew up surfing, I grew up skateboarding. I spent all of my time just outdoors. Um, I was playing a lot of AFL, which is like Australian football, and I was getting in a lot of fights. I actually got put onto like the top team in school just to rough up the other players, like just to start fights and stuff like that. So I guess I was a pretty angry kid when I was little. I was always, you know, outdoors doing my own thing with my friends, but I had a pretty like dysfunctional family at the same time. The relationship I had with my parents was probably just like a lack of relationship. My mum's an amazing person, I love her, but she's got her own sort of like world of problems that she sort like sort of deals with herself, so you know, I don't don't speak to my dad like a like I'm not really sure what to say. How come you don't talk to your dad if you don't mind me asking? Just don't. Like he just stopped talking to me when I was when I was um when I was like a, a young teenager. That was probably one reason I was a bit of like I like getting into fights. I liked to graffiti and like I was a bit of a rat bag like growing up. When I found jujitsu, I really liked the community aspect of that. I met a lot of like older grown-ups that would kind of be like my role models in that community. So having that jujitsu gym to go to was just, you know, a good place for me to get away to, and pretty much spent all of my time there. As soon as school ended, worked as a pool boy for a couple of months. I was driving around cleaning pools all day, saved up a bunch of money, and then I bought a ticket to America. I literally bought the ticket and then told my mum that, that, that um, in the moment, I was like, oh, I'm going to America tomorrow. Me and my mate bought a van. We went all through America. We went all through Central America. For me, that, that time of my life, when I first got out of school and first got away from Australia and like my environment there was probably like the happiest time of my life. And that's just kind of led to where I am right now. What I'm trying to do in the show is just to be myself and do what I love doing, which is jujitsu. And I guess I want to kind of encourage other people to do the same, just to be yourself and do what you love doing. Oh, so they, they, they're really overstaying their world. Oh, okay. We're training everybody. 1% better every day. 365% better at the end of the year. Yes, sir. Never stop scratching. Let's go, baby. Let's go. BT Master is our team move every day. No sleep when you're living the dream. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, it's time for y'all to beat it. Out, out, out. Time to go. Your time is up. You guys been over here playing grab ass, playing touch butt with each other. It's time to get the hell out. We got the contract there. You sign it, we'll get out of here. Oh, man. Forget the contract. Oh. I already signed the contract. Oh, sign the contract, bro. Tim Spriggs and the red team gonna train now. Tim is very much the opposite of Craig. Where Craig is known for his guard play. Tim is a top player. Takedowns, pressure passing, guillotine. I'm excited to see how he runs practice. Got some big dudes on there. I want to see what he teaches them. This is going to be our first hard training session of the camp. They were comfortable now. They had a good night's sleep in a very nice house. None of my guys have been sleeping in a sewer, so I'm expecting them to be well recovered. We're just going to hammer down. Nice. Nice. Hey, we got we to get a finish, guys. I need a finish over here. I need a finish. You're looking like a lightweight out here, Dan. You're looking fantastic. Your matches aren't going three hours, bro. Why not? You're finished. You're finished everything. Training for me, to drill some stuff. We got a little sweat going, a little loosened up. Um, you know, I couldn't do much. Tim has good energy. I love my teammates, man. I feel like we have a lot of size, you know, which benefits us in a lot of different things. But of course, we know technique. You can drag him. I feel like we're a very strong, complete team. We all have specialties. We all can benefit off each other in training room, which is really cool. Be very aggressive when you get to that position. I don't want long matches out here. We want to get through these guys as fast as possible. <laughs> When you're in an opportunity to pass, I want you guys to explode. I want you to treat it like it's, you're cycling. You know, you got a steady pace, but when it's on, it's on. 
You know, you gotta chip away, chip away, and when you see an opening, attack. You guys are the better athletes. You guys are just as technical, if not more technical. We gotta use our athleticism. We gotta use what we got and break them. I think Dan sees me as like the biggest threat to him on our team and he sees Isaac as the biggest threat on the other team so I think he wants me to lose. Every muscle in my body is sore. It hurts to even go to the bathroom like my intestines hurt. My wrist, you know, I posted on it wrong on the cement, I'll go off the mat, and then I hurt myself more trying to heel hook them. So that twisting motion, like something gave out here, so I can't really bear weight with my wrist. And then my sternum popped, and now I'm having trouble like taking full breaths, and the cartilage here is pretty painful, so I'm sure there's some something wrong right up in here in my sternum. I think the strategy behind Dan selecting Adam versus Isaac is that he wants to probably see what Isaac has as far as attacks. And I see a way for Adam to take control and get the victory. But like I said, the strategy should be getting as much information as possible. I want to see a more diverse set of attacks. Take your time and chip away. I think that Yes, he's very composed. Yes, he's a world champion, but with anybody in this rule set, if we get them past the 10 minute mark, things will open up and he'll be a little bit more aggressive and I think we can capitalize on that. Right. Yeah. I took the match anyways, knowing that he wants me to lose and it's gonna be a tough match. I'm not gonna run away from a fight just cause I'm injured, right? I can still do it. I gotta be good enough to beat him with one hand, that's all. <laughs> I'm never out of a match. You can have me halfway unconscious and I'm still gonna come back and fight harder and win. I want to be a G. That's what G's do. I'm not the most liked person in jiu-jitsu. I think a lot of people know that like Gordon and I don't get along, and it's, I'm an octopus black belt, so everyone hates me anyway. Gordon Ryan, I mean. Pound for pound best, ADCC absolute champ, also pretty controversial. You know, he, he speaks his mind, he's got a lot of rivals, but I mean, hey, nobody can beat him. I think about a year and a half ago, I commented on a jiu-jitsu post of like, oh, who can pass his guard? And I was like, he's not like unbeatable. That's all I said, I'm like, he's definitely not unbeatable. Like someone can do it. And he saw that and ever since then, he's just been on a war path to like drag my name through the mud and post about me whenever he can. He's always sitting around taking videos of me when I compete. And it doesn't bother me at all. Like to have someone that focused on me is like really funny, especially someone who has way more success and clout than I do right now. And I'm like, oh no, more followers. No, don't do that. Oh no, oh gosh, please. So you got thick skin. Where did that come from? My whole life I've had to have thick skin. I grew up like the youngest of six in a trailer in the middle of the woods, like dead end dirt road on a little farm and I had no friends. I got bullied a lot through school, you know, getting the rocks thrown at me, everyone saying bad stuff about the clothes, the bad clothes I'm wearing, right? Um, so then to come home and have parents that weren't the most loving, like I got bullied really badly and just had no one to talk to about it because I just get bullied at home. So there's a lot of like verbal abuse, so, you know, Definitely wasn't a nice place to stay. My brother committed suicide back in 2004. Um, he was going through a lot of depression and didn't have any help for it, right? And one day decided that was the best way out. I used to think of myself as like the most unlucky person ever. I used to think just, man, life's a on me every single day and I just had to deal with it. And like to the point where like, man, I contemplated suicide multiple times. I was like, man, I hate my life. Like this sucks. Like and there's no hope. Jiu-Jitsu gave me a lot of hope in life. I was like, wow, I finally love something. You know, something that actually gets my fire going. I never felt that before, like this passion. I was 17, just graduated high school, training full-time every single day. 
you know, someone that I started training under, he sat me down and he's like, look, you're not gonna be a jiu-jitsu rock star. You're gonna, you're not smart enough, you're not athletic, you're not good. Like, you should go get a job, learn a trade, go to school, so you're not gonna make it in jiu-jitsu. And that crushed me, because that was like a father figure at the time. So I was like, man, why does everybody think I suck? Why does no one believe I can do something good? And I was like, well, if I stay in New Hampshire, like, I'm gonna end up just like a lot of people I know. They all get into heroin super young, and that's it. I was like, I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna go to San Diego. I'm gonna move to Autos because like, I cannot give up until I do absolutely everything I can. One last shot at this pipe dream before I... For me, it's a, it's a pleasure to promote uh, Adam Bradley. To the I tell Gal Val that my former coach told me I was never gonna be anything special, right? And he's like, what? Like, Dude, like, your jiu-jitsu is beautiful, man. Like, you're gonna be the best. You work hard, you train hard, you're gonna be the best. And instantly I was like, wow, like, Andre Gabao said that to me. Like, one of the greatest of all time. I competed in the uh, Vegas Open not too long after that, and I remember I won. And since then, my confidence just started to snowball effect, just skyrocket. Started winning more and more and more, double gold this, everything. And then I won my first world title. And I was like, dude, like, I can do anything. I actually can do this. Everyone was wrong. It's all up to me. My brother's passing affected me pretty greatly. Um, that's when I finally realized like the concept of death. It's made me become such a workhorse and so driven that like I only have X amount of time here. I don't know how much time I have, but I gotta make the most of it. And so the one way I can kind of not die in a sense and not completely die is to leave a mark that people will remember me for. And I've chosen jiu-jitsu, I've chosen martial arts, teaching, and that's the way that I can most easily affect the most amount of people in a positive way. And if I can do that, then, you know, a part of me will always stick around. Between my jiu-jitsu, my knowledge, my life experiences, the things I struggle with personally, I feel like I have a lot to offer to this world and those around me and those I care about. And anytime I get down, there's no way I could ever take my own life because I have, I know for a fact I have so much to give and I, I have a mission. I'm gonna make this world a better place. No matter how hard you try to put me down, I'm gonna come back. Because of me and my willpower, I came up from those bad places and made my dreams happen. So in that match, it's the same thing. I'm here, I'm on this mat. Whoever wins this match makes it to the house. I wanna get in that house. Those couple seconds between tapping and getting put to sleep, there's still time to escape. And that's the time I escaped. Some people want to give up in those couple seconds. Some people want to keep fighting. And I'm one of those people that keeps fighting and that's why I won. I don't care if it takes five hours. You're not going to stop me. You're not going to win against me. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. Something. I need to work on this stuff I'm gonna do on the mat. Let's go real quick. What uh, problems are you having? So you say sprain, what happened? Um, a twisting motion. So sure. I was trying to roll my wrist this way, mm -hmm. hold this way, mm -hmm. but something gave here. And it was like pop, 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 pop. Okay. All throughout here. Okay. And now my range of motion is very limited. I can go as far before having sure. a sensation. Yep. And reflection, yep. That far before feeling a sensation before pain. Good. Check towards the ground. Good. And then bring your head down. Towards the ceiling. Perfect. Good. How PG is this? Can we have you take your shirt off or is it? Oh, that's fine. I think they prefer that. Okay. All right. 
to so much easier to work on this. Oh, for sure. Uh, ratings just went up. Great. <laughs> Dead dog. Rated X by Slow this. By the an hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, he's gonna fight to the very end. I haven't seen Isaac go into deep waters against guys yet, past the 10 minute mark. I think it kind of plays into Adam's hand because he's been to wars. He knows what it takes to fight through and get a tough win, so my money's on Adam. Perfect, perfect. Adam Bradley's submission defense looks really good, but again, it looked really good against a, a fresh purple belt. I don't believe his submission defense will be strong enough to hold off Isaac's submission game. I think Isaac gets it done under five. It's been tough. I feel like my body is still even a little sore from my last match, but I've definitely competed under worse conditions, so it's no excuse. This is a submission only, no time limit match. The only way for either fighter to win is by submission. The first to force their opponent to tap out will walk away with the victory. They will be on the mat for as long as it takes. 30 seconds, 30 minutes, or 30 hours. Only one will walk away with a submission victory. Strikes and slams will not be allowed and will result in a disqualification. But all submissions are legal. There are no judges' decisions, there are no points, and there is no other way out. The only thing that will stop the match is a submission. Welcome to Who's Next. It's time to get after it. What makes this rule set so special is that it is submission only. And to submit someone is for somebody to pretty much give up. Like you've put them in a position where they have to basically like bow down to you and say, I give up. It's like a little agreement you have that you're not gonna get strangled unconscious or you're not gonna get your arm broken. Like, you feel like you literally might die, you know, going out against somebody that's trying to kill you. Preparing for a no time limit match is just preparing for the unknown. When you step to go on deck, you could be there for 30 seconds, you could be there for three hours. So you gotta be ready to go anytime, any place, and you gotta be going out there and going for the finish. The first quarter final matchup will be from Team Spriggs, Adam Bradley, up against from Team Jones, Isaac Michelle. Scratch pass gas, baby. Fight! Let's go, Adam. Let's go. Scratch. You control the pace. Let's look to just use hand fighting to, to tire him out a bit. Hey, you gotta keep your head up, Adam. Squat, squat, nice. squat. Keep your legs under you, keep your head up. You gotta keep your hands up and your head up. Yup, circling back towards the center, nice. Perfect, Isaac. Keep the grips, keep the grips, keep the grips. Go! He cannot use that right hand, Isaac. Right Good. hand. Nice, yeah, rampy out, rampy shrimp, out. Shrimp, shrimp, back shrimp, to your shrimp, guard. shrimp, turn. Yes, we're getting to our guard. Nice. Good inversion, yeah. We're getting Good to our space. spot. This is where we want to be. Yeah. Yep. Watch the back take. Watch the back take. Good nice. turn. 
Nothing there. Perfect. Ooh. Can't breathe in them tunnels, baby. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Nice. Yes, Adam. You ready to sit back? Nice. Watch it. Watch it. Nice, nice Adam. Bradley's the master of escapes. All right, see you guys in three hours. Backing up. Adam, stop Backing running up. away. Adam, move forward, bro. We don't have three hours today. Watch it. Fight the hands. Beautiful. Isaac, pump to pump. Hey, Adam, I need a hard bridge and roll, buddy. Oh, nice. Trying to kill him. Mm -hmm. Trying to smother him to death. Yep, 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 yep. No, no, hey, no, 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 no. That's no. fine. He had to respect it. Just stomped him. What the <laughs> <laughs> Step over, chair sit. He likes it, Isaac. Keep your left arm tight. Good, nice Adam. Tight. Yes. Nice. Adam Bradley just can't be finished, bro. Isaac, he's breaking. I don't see any breaking over here. Tim, that's your move. That's all he's doing. That's fine. He can do it all day. Climb. Yes, lock the leg. Lock it up. He's yep, pummeling yep. in. Yes. Yes. Oh, I like it. I like it. He's looking like he had a three-hour match yesterday. Let's go. Isaac, he's getting super tired. Isaac, listen to that breathing, bro. You're doing good, Adam. He's shaking his head. He's breaking. Hey, Isaac, we've hit 30 minutes. He hasn't done a thing. He's got nothing for you, Adam. He's given up submitting you. Isaac's got nothing for Adam. That's what we're watching here, right? It looks like it. Hey, man, he thought he had an easy road. He thought he had an easy road, Adam. <laughs> this is where we want to be. This is where we want to be. Wait, Adam, you've wasted enough of our time, man. Come on. Hey, him. Keep on doing what you're doing. Yes, that. Watch it, Adam. Yeah. 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 Legs in. Right. Fight the hands. Yeah. Hey! 41 minutes in. How long you say, Nikki? 41 minutes. Oh, good. I love it. Oh, what happened, man? I, I, you, you look swole now, man. I, I thought you had enough in you. I thought you had enough in you to squeeze. Watch the hook. Back to the mat. Diagonal control. Yeah. Pull him up. Lock a body triangle. Lock a body triangle. Be patient here. Patient here. Your time to strangle is when he switches hips. Position over submission. Isaac, this is beautiful. It's a perfect position. So my game plan was to get him a bit tired before I started hunting submissions. It's exactly how I thought it would go. It went a little bit longer. I think it was like 45 minutes, which was definitely the longest match I've ever had. So that was a new experience. He was very defensive, staying in turtle positions, trying to keep inside position, not keep elbows and knees away from his body. So he played that game very well, but he was never going to tire me out. Isaac dominated the match, but really had a lot of trouble putting Adam away. When it's a no time of a match, there's really no incentive to try to escape bad positions. And when someone doesn't try to escape, very, very difficult to find an opening. It's hard to force openings. So I think, although Adam was surviving and his corner was making a lot of noise, he didn't get close to any good position, any submission, anything like that. Isaac, he's really on track to, to win this show. I'm just so grateful to be here with Slow Grappling competing and uh, getting the opportunity of a lifetime, so it means everything. Adam, I knew going in that he was very fatigued from his fight to get into the house. He has the heart of a lion. He, he didn't make any excuses. He still came to practice. He tried to help his teammates. It was pretty sad to see, to be honest. I was pretty disappointed just because he had fought so hard that match. He was kind of making Isaac a little bit uncomfortable, I felt. Isaac probably thought going into the match that it'd be an easy out for him, but it took about 40, 41 minutes for him to get the finish. And it shows me that if Adam were to have a rematch 100% with Isaac, it would be a little bit different. You did fine, man. You did fine. 
good. He did great. Yeah, he had the longest match in the start. And he was getting frustrated the whole time. He did your injuries. Can't have my back. Mm -hmm. Can't have fight. Yeah. But you did fine. I should have been more aggressive or more preemptive on the back kicks. I knew I couldn't defend the back. He did wonderful, man. He did wonderful. Yeah. I just let him beat me up for 40 minutes. <laughs> should have just shouldn't have even taken this match. It's just been really rough for me, so I didn't like. I had confidence in myself, but at the same time, like I know I'm like handicapped right now. I went out there. I'm like, man, I might lose, but like I'm out here. I'm on this map. I love being here. I love competing. I love this opportunity. So of course I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna do my best, right? And unfortunately my best looked like trash today. And I just got beat up for 40 minutes, but I was kind of hoping to tire him out and find that perfect uh, opportunity for me and it just didn't come in time. You know, much respect to him, wish him the best of luck and I'm sure he's gonna do great at Black Belt. And I hope to fight him again someday. My Jiu-Jitsu is way better than that. I'm known for being scrappy, scrambly through every position and today I just didn't represent that and that's why I lost, I wasn't myself. I feel like I need to take some time off and get my mind right and get that fire back, you know? My whole life has been trials and tribulations and a whole lot of, a whole lot of mountains to move, you know? So this is no different. It just motivates me to get better, you know? I just gotta feel out the feelings today you know, I can be sad or whatever today, and then tomorrow it's a new day. Back to being thankful for my life and everything I have and working towards progress. And I'll be back better because, you know, I can't stop. Congratulations to Isaac Michel. After 45 minutes, he was able to find the choke and secure victory. Isaac moves on to the semifinals and keeps himself in the running for the grand prize and title of Who's Next Champion. Next time on Who's Next. I literally just woke up in like two minutes. I've been awake for two minutes. Today, our first training session is at B Team headquarters owned by Craig Jones. I see a bunch of security cameras. I don't feel too comfortable showing too many techniques in here because they will most likely steal it and try to use it against me in the future. We got to come in. Actually, I was having a coffee watching the security camera footage. And they don't know what the challenge is gonna be. We drive them out here in the middle of nowhere. They get out, they don't know what's going on. They're trying to figure it out. I don't know if y'all ever had a grapple with 2,000 pounds, but. Oh, that's me, bro. I don't wanna bet you. You didn't know we're trying to kill you guys on this show.